Progressive Tube is a type of passive solar water heater ideal for Florida. The Progressive Tube water heater can usually heat all the hot water you need. When sunlight hits the solar panel, it goes through the glass. It becomes trapped inside where it is absorbed as heat, making the water hot. As you see here, your city or well water flows through a pipe to the solar panel. The sun heats the water as it passes through tubes in the panel. As the water heats, it rises to the top of the panel. Then due to pressure, it is forced to flow back to the water tank. Because no pump is needed, it is called a passive system. All right, this is a, a passive solar hot water system. Uh, cold water comes into the system through either the street or the well. Comes into a ball valve, which uh, basically isolates the whole system, um, tank and solar. This is a normally open, uh, closed position here. Uh, cold water comes in, um, into a three-way valve, which diverts the water either up to the roof to the solar panel, or uh, back into the tank to isolate the system. There are three ways or modes to direct the flow for the solar water heater. Uh, this would be a preheat mode. So this, this is generally used uh, in Florida, wintertime months when adequate heat is not uh, provided by the solar panel. Uh, the tank is used as a backup source of heat. Under normal operation, the water would come into the three-way. Um, go up to the roof, be heated by the sun, um, come back down through the return line. Uh, so the, the, the heated water from the, the solar panel comes down into this uh, three-way here. Uh, this would be a preheat mode, so the water heated by the panel is, is diverted into the hot water tank. So the solar panel is preheating the water, and when water is pulled from the hot water heater, it's replaced with um, preheated water from the solar panel. Although it is called preheat, much of the time, even in the winter, in Florida, the solar panel will be providing all the hot water. Preheat mode allows the conventional water heater to be a backup source of heat if needed. So what happens is, when there isn't enough sun to heat the water adequately, the thermostat on the conventional water heater will cause the electric or gas to turn on and heat the water. Uh, there's also a direct mode, which would be like this. So the water being heated from the panel is then sent directly into the house. Typically, uh, summertime months, uh, you, you can pull the hot water directly from the panel back into the house. You go direct from the solar heater and not even put the water out of this tank. You go right from the heater right into your showers. And that's what we do in the summer. In the summer. Because okay. the water is so hot, it holds 50 gallons of water. Okay. So, and it doesn't lose, it might lose 10 degrees on a cold night. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about 150 degree water. Okay. So, let's say you lose 10, let's say you lose 20 degrees. Right. You know, you're down to 130. You, you will scold yourself with 130 degree water. And 50 gallons is more than enough. 50 gallons is more than enough. So I figured during the summer, just pie pass this all together. Because if you store water in here, you've got to use electric to keep it warm if you don't use it. So why store the water? You don't need it. Another component in the system is the anti-scald valve, um, which controls uh, the temperature of the water coming from the panel going into the house. This is an adjustable valve. And to isolate the solar panel, you could uh, turn the three-way and also shut off the ball valve. So now no water is able to go to the solar panel. All heat's provided by the hot water heater itself. In cold climates, with extended periods of freezing weather, the valves can be closed, the solar panel drained, and the conventional water heater will be put back into use until warmer weather. This is not something you have to worry about in the Deep South. First step is finding the ideal place on the roof for the solar panel. The solar panel uses the sun's energy to heat water. It needs to be where it will get the most sun for the longest period of time during the day and during as much of the year as possible. Fortunately, there is a wonderful device called the Solar Pathfinder that can figure all this out for you. 
It is simply placed on the roof. It will show, reflected in the glass, any possible obstacles that may shade the roof. In this picture, you can see the reflection in the glass of trees that surround the home. The tree's reflection does not touch the graph area. This indicates it is an excellent location for the solar panel because it will not be shaded at any time all year. Now you will need to locate the exact position of the roof trusses or rafters to which the solar panel will be attached. The brackets that hold the solar panel on the roof must be placed so that the screws holding them can be screwed into the roof trusses or rafters. Here you see one of the brackets that will hold the solar panel being attached to the roof truss. If the roof has an adequate slope, the solar panel can be placed flat on the roof with only a small gap between the roof and the panel, as you see here. If the roof is flat or nearly flat, or if the panel is to be placed on the ground, it will need to be attached to a frame that is adjusted to give it the best angle to get the most solar energy. The angle is calculated and measured, taking into consideration the slope of the roof. The correct angle varies according to the latitude. The front braces are able to swivel so the angle can be adjusted. The progressive tube solar water heater weighs about 200 pounds, so you will need some type of mechanical hoist to get it up onto the roof. Once the panel is securely attached to the roof, the next step is to connect the plumbing so that the water can flow into the panel for heating and flow out from the panel to the insulated hot water tank located in the home. A pressure relief valve is connected that will open if water pressure gets too high. Besides having a pressure relief valve, the system must have a vacuum breaker. All connections must be carefully soldered. Anywhere that pipes and hardware are connected to the roof, sealant must be used to prevent leaks. The copper pipes must be covered with insulation. When the solar panel is located on the roof, copper pipes usually must be run through an attic or crawl space. Copper tubing is more expensive than plastic tubing, but hot water going through plastic tubing loses more heat. When the solar water heater is built on the ground away from the home, less expensive plastic tubing that can withstand high temperatures may be used instead of copper. The plastic tubing is covered with insulation and then run through PVC pipe to prevent the insulation from getting wet and losing its insulating ability. Heating water with solar power can save you money. The federal government is offering tax credits of 30% of the cost of a solar-powered water heater, up to a total of $2,000.